So it's kind of a crappy day and it's a good day to clean the Wolverine. Had it out yesterday and got it muddy. It's just what she looks like after a little hosing. She's still pretty filthy. But uh, one of the things that you almost have to do all the time on these things is keep that radiator clean. It's a good idea on any bike, but especially on these. If you look, I don't know if you can see it here. If you look down here, that corner of the radiator is exposed. It's the same on the other side. And it's back in behind an oil cooler. and So it's a little difficult to get down in there and give it a good uh, cleaning. So there, there is a product on the market. Uh, you can buy from Amazon for, I don't know, somewhere between 30 and 40 bucks. But I decided today I'm going to build my own. So here's what we're going to use to make it. We got uh, 10 feet of copper coil there. It's quarter inch. Could have went three eighths, but uh, I'm cheap, so I went with the quarter. We have here a uh, adapter. It's got a compression fitting on one side for the quarter inch, and then a hose adapter on the other side. And up here is a uh, brass shutoff, so that I can not only control the flow to this thing without having to run back and forth to the spigot, but also you can shut it off and then switch back over from our little tool over to the hose or whatever you want to do. So here's our parts out of the package. Um, I forgot to say how much these were. This this was like five, this was like six, and this was like seven. So all told it's like 15, 16 bucks. And so inside the swivel adapter, this is going to be your garden hose. It's going to go on here. And then there'll be the shutoff there. This uh, copper coil, this is a compression thing. So once this is all squared away, this little gizmo here goes on the end well this goes on first that goes inside of it and then you'll screw it all onto here which will cinch that onto there these little ends that come with the copper coil we're going to hold on to those because those are going to be important and i'll show you why in a moment so i've marked out my length here you'll notice i didn't uncoil this too much because uh copper tubing tends to kink if you try to uh just unbend it and you know straighten it out and everything but there's a little trick to that I'll show you shortly, but I have it marked out. I got my tubing cutter. You could probably cut it with a hacksaw or something if you don't have a tubing cutter, but you know, if you do any kind of home repair and you don't have a tubing cutter, go get one. They're fairly cheap and they save you a ton of work. So the tubing's cut and I left it in this U shape for a reason. Um, see these little end caps here? What we're gonna do is, it's, it's very difficult to straighten out this copper tubing if you don't have like a, a tubing bender or you know pipe bender or something like that. It can uh, tend to kink on you and get all goofy, but there is a little trick that we're gonna do. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill this with water and cap it and make sure the water goes to both sides and we're gonna stick it in the freezer. And once it's frozen, then you can bend this and make, straighten it out real nice without kinking it. Let's see how it works. While waiting for that uh, tubing to freeze, I made myself a little jig here. Just out of some scrap lumber, two by six, um, one by something. And I used a really cheap set of hole drills, hole saws, to create uh, a small radius and a large radius. I'm not really going to use this for too much, but in the future if I wanted to do the same thing and bend it differently, I could just swap these two around or something. But what I did was I made it big enough to fit this tubing into there and there. And the plan is going to be to take that tubing that I have in the freezer. And when it's done is I'm going to put it down in here, bend it around and make my small radius and then flip it back around, put it in here and then use this straight board while it's secured down here to straighten it out. Um, it just gives me a nice straight edge to straighten it out against and it, it can run long um i measured it so i don't have to waste too much tubing but i do plan on cutting maybe an inch off of each side or something but you definitely want a small radius to get down inside there because there's not a whole lot of room in front of the radiator and behind the uh, oil cooler there so a small radius is definitely the way to go i think that mine this is such a cheap set it's an inch and a quarter um, if you had a smaller one, I'd probably go even a little bit smaller, but we'll see how this works out. All right, back when things are froze. All right, so that uh, water and tubing was in the freezer for about a half an hour, and it was froze. And 
The reason for using the caps is, one, you want to hold the water in, but don't put it all the way on. It gives a little bit of expansion room so it doesn't blow out this tubing when it freezes. Plus, we're not going for a deep freeze. We're just going for, you know, frozen. You can see that it kept its shape. It didn't kink anywhere bending it. It's still got some little things to work out here and there, but I did do it exactly like... Sorry, I didn't get any shots of it, but can't hold the camera and do it at the same time. But I did stick the end in here and make my bend. And then I brought it back around again and put it between these two. And then just basically held that there and pulled this back up against my board, which is nice and straight. Um, you can still work it a little bit here. Um, but, you know, I'll take the tubing cutter and clean that end up a little bit. This end's a little long, so I'll use my tubing cutter and cut a little bit off of there, but that should do it. So now I'm going to assemble it. All right, so here we are assembled. Note that that leak is my hose and not the, uh, the gizmo. It's actually coming out of right there. It's been doing it for a year now. Anyhow, here we go. Uh, the compression fitting, the hose adapter, and this, which is kind of nice because it gives you one-handed control of the thing. Forward and back. Plus you can leave that on there to change uh, back to like your hose adapter to do big cleaning. So, not only have I been able to clean the radiator with this, but I've also found some other uses for it. Because you have that fine control, you can get right in here to the suspension and clean it out. You're able to get down in here and clean out inside of there. Underneath the shocks, you can get it up underneath here and clean out any kind of mud that might be between the wheel and the caliper. Get rid of any kind of crap in there. Garbage in there. Clean down in here. Not doing a great job filming, but. And then because you can one-hand it, turn it off, turn it back on, you can really blast in certain places if you need it. Wouldn't recommend doing that in your suspension or anywhere there's a grease fitting. Another thing you can use this for is getting up underneath these fenders without getting filthy. Okay, so far it's been great on everything, but let's see how it does on the radiator. I don't know if you can see down in there, but it's not filthy, but it's not pristine either. So, trying to one hand and film at the same time. Give it a little bit of go. Don't want too much pressure in the water. Oh yeah. It's too dark to see down in there, but there's plenty of room to get between the oil fill with the oil cooler and the radiator. And using you know, just a little bit of pressure can really get that out. So I'm gonna call it success. Now, it's not the most durable tool, I think. Probably going to screw it up. I might actually store it in a piece of uh, inch and a half PVC or something just to keep it from getting banged up in the garage. But overall, for $15 and about well, start to finish, including the freezing, less than two hours, um, got a handy dandy little tool. I would like to note that it doesn't take long for this uh, tubing to freeze solid in the freezer. It also doesn't take long for it to thaw out. So once you get it out and into your jig, you know, you gotta work kinda quickly. Leave one of the ends on. It'll kinda like ah, keep a vacuum in there to keep the ice and the water from running out. As soon as I had mine bent and took the end off of it, everything ran out and I didn't wanna rebend it again. Um, so I, like, there's a little hink right there. But overall, not too shabby total of uh, fifteen dollars and two hours in time and with uh, the tubing left over 
I could make a longer one perhaps to get down inside the console and squirt out anything that might be trapped up underneath the frame there. can make a shorter one for working underneath. Um, all I would need is this hose adapter right here. Again, that's seven bucks. So this you only have to buy one time. So with that 10-foot uh, tubing that I purchased, I could probably get three, maybe four more tools out of it. Hope this is helpful.